Hey folks, so often when we're working on the range, people ask us for basic pistol cleaning tips. So today I thought I'd put a short video together to give you an idea of how I like to clean my pistols. One thing I'll tell you is it seems every person you talk to has their own uh, special way of doing these things, and that's great. People like certain products, etc. cetera. Uh, for me, I'm pretty lazy, so I like to keep it basic. One thing that I do want to point out though, is when cleaning guns, the number one rule of thumb is to always, always ensure that your firearm is unloaded. And for that matter, I would recommend that you take any source of ammunition that you have and store it in a separate room. What I have sitting here are the basic tools needed for pistol cleaning, with paper towels, an old toothbrush, a couple cleaning rods. This cleaning rod has a nine millimeter brush on the end of it, Q-tips, gun cleaning patches. I also have uh, some Slip 2000, it's a weapons grade grease. You can also use a high quality oil in lieu of that. Obsolete foaming gun cleaner. I really like this product, it actually foams when you apply it and it does not have any odor. And then my secret weapon here is carb choke cleaner. Make sure if you do use carb choke cleaner, you get a high quality brand that will not leave any residue. All right, so the number one rule with uh, gun cleaning is make sure that your ammunition source, your magazine, bullets, etc., are not even the same room with you. I mean, it's a great practice because so often what happens is when people go to clean their firearms, they uh, have ammunition in the same room and, and that's when accidents can happen. One of the things that you wanna do is you wanna visually inspect. So what I'm doing is I'm looking in the chamber here to make sure there's no bullet. I'm also looking down the mag well to make sure there's no magazine. So I'm now visually and I'm manually inspecting that the weapon is clear. One thing that I want to point out, when you look at other manufacturers such as Glock, this safety tip really holds true. Because with Glocks, unfortunately the way they're set up is you actually have to dry fire the, the weapon to make it uh, come apart. Here's what I mean. So I'm gonna visually and manually inspect this one as well. It's clear. With Glocks, you slide the action forward and you have to dry fire and release the, uh, the trigger mechanism in order to take it apart. From that point, you just gently rock the slide backwards. There's two takedown levers on either side, pull them forward, and then it all slides apart. And from there, you can take out your recoil, spring assembly, your barrel, slide. This room. To take one of these 320s apart, they're pretty simplistic. What you're gonna do is lock the slide, and then you take your takedown lever, just rotate it forward, a nice little push-pull motion, the entire slide comes apart. You'll notice here I have a slide that is basically completely stripped. I could take the firing pin assembly out and all that, but today I'm not going to. You have your barrel, recoil spring assembly, and then you have your lower. What's really neat about the SIG is you can actually take, this is called a fire control unit, you can actually take it completely out. And what you do is you just pull the takedown lever pin and you rotate it to where it comes completely out. And from there, you just grab the front of the fire control unit and slide it up and out. And voila, there you go. So now I have a basically polymer frame. I'm gonna set that to the side. And I have the fire control unit here. I'm not going to take all these pieces apart to clean it, but I will show you a pretty neat way to get it cleaned up that's uh, fast and, and time efficient. So to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my basically skeletonized slide assembly and I'm gonna set it off to the side. But one thing I would recommend for those of you guys that are running an RDS, make sure that you cover that lens because the last thing you want is solvent and harsh chemicals on that glass. If you don't have one of these nifty little covers, you can use saran wrap, uh, you can take uh, tape, just 
regular masking tape and put it across the front there. Just something to keep solvent out of it. So we're going to set that off to the side for now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clean my barrel. And there's a couple key points here that you want to take care of. Number one is you want to obviously scrub the barrel out. And I'm going to use this foaming gun cleaner to do it. And what I like to do is just put a dab in the top. And then I'm going to take my cleaning rod with my 9mm brush. I'm just going to run it through multiple times. The next thing I do before I actually wipe the solvent out is I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm just going to come across the chamber face as well as the feed ramp. Just give that a nice scrub. This pistol is ported. You'll notice the foam coming out of the end of the barrel here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my toothbrush and just scrub all around these ports. Make sure I get any of the carbon buildup off of there. And then on the crown of the barrel. Notice I'm using a nylon toothbrush. I would not recommend using a copper brush on this. And by all means, do not use one of the stainless steel brushes. So now that I've spread this pretty good, I'm going to take one of my paper towel pieces. I'm just going to wipe the, outs the outside off. From there, I'm going to take <clears throat> my gun cleaning patch, place it on the top. I'm going to take my second rod, just push it through. On the first one, I'll push it through one on either side here. Get all the junk out. You can see all of the gunk, the fouling, etc. Basically, I'm just going to run this thing through until I have a patch that comes out. That is relatively clean. You can see this one is just about there. Let's do one more. All right, looking good. All right, we're gonna set this off to the side. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the slide assembly out. So what I like to do is take the foaming gun cleaner here, just give it a little a little bit on the inside. Again, I'm gonna take this toothbrush, give it a nice scrub on the inside, get in the rails. Get it in here as good as I can. One thing that I do wanna point out is over here where your extractor's at, there's always a lot of buildup right here on this lip. Make sure you scrub that, get it out. And then on the breech face, Want to take your toothbrush and get in there and scrub that as well. From that point, again, I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm just going to wipe everything clean. For the smaller places in this slide, I like to use a Q-tip. Just go in here and wipe all this out. That a quick look. It's pretty good. I'm gonna set that to the side. On your recoil assembly, again, you can spray foam on that. Give it a nice wipe down with a toothbrush. Take your paper towel, go the excess uh, solvent and oil off of there. Okay. On my fire control unit, I like to take this thing and again cover it with some of the foaming solvent here. I'm going to use my toothbrush to just get in there and break up all the powder residue, any of the grease, oil, dirt, etc. that this may have collected. At this point, I've scrubbed it down. I have two options. I can either use a paper towel to wipe all this up. Or, I can use my trusty carb choke cleaner. And this does a great job of getting all the residue off. So what I like to do is just hit it from the top up here. And notice as I'm turning it, I'm hitting all the different angles and edges. 
And normally I do this over a trash can. But what I really love about this carb choke cleaner is not only does it pull all the residue off, but it dries, and so it doesn't leave it doesn't leave any of the uh, dirt and junk behind. I'll wipe it off with a paper towel, and we're going to set that aside. All right, so let's talk about reassembly. Now, as we reassemble a weapon here, we also want to start lubing it. One thing that I like to do is use the gun grease that I have and put a slight layer right here on the end of the barrel where the lockup happens. I'm going to put a slight layer right here on the top of the hood of the barrel. Now, I'm going to wipe this off, but you'll notice it's still going to be pretty slick. The other thing that I find in doing this is it makes cleanup a lot easier because it does not allow all the carbon and build up to adhere to the uh, metallic surface. So I'm gonna take the barrel, stick it back in the slide, get my recoil spring set back up. Now I'm gonna take a little dab of the gun grease and I'm gonna slide it right there. Okay. Next thing we need to do is insert our fire control unit back into the actual uh, frame of the weapon. So the easiest way to do that is drop the trigger down in place and then you'll notice I have it canted to where I'm sitting in the back end first. I'm just going to push it down and back. There it goes. And put it into place. And then from there I'm going to take the takedown lever, smear a little bit of that grease onto that. Make sure on these 320s that you take that takedown lever and push it all the way forward. From this point, I want to lube a couple places on the fire control unit. I want to lube these rails. I want to also lube right across the top of the fire control unit itself. And then to reassemble it, Bring it back, lock the slide to the rear, send the takedown lever forward, and there you have it. From this point, I just like to cycle the action several times, and you'll notice I have a little bit of that grease sticking out the back. I'm just going to wipe that off, and there you have it.